come on, focus the bull market. What's going on here? You know, like, uh, did you invest in anything that you know goes up, or you know, why why so quiet? Anyways, today we are going to back to tech. We have to build some stuff to, to profit in the future. So today I'm going to talk about how to build a cross-chain yield DEX on StarkNet, of course. So, but first, like, let's do a short intro. Kind of like back in the day, I started as a core dev in Ethereum Foundation, working on something that's called Zocratis, which is toolbox for ZK Snarks on Ethereum. It was like 2018, so, you know, ZK was in its, you know, like just starting and so on. So it was like a long time ago. Then I switched to Solidity team because, as they said back in the day, ZK will never mature. It will be like a tech that will be, you know, just some like demo thing that will never kind of be used. And look at us now. So, you know, like we are building a bunch of stuff on it. But because of that, I switched to Solidity team, worked there as a, as a lead of Sourcify project for like two and a half years. The idea was quite simple, but quite like, you know, powerful to basically verify automatically Solidity smart contracts so that users don't have to trust you, you know, some random bytecode, but you can actually read what is going in the contracts. Well, the thing is, there was no token, so people were not really interested. So you know how those things go. And after that, you know, I started the Shard Labs, which is uh, to this day DeFi company, build a bunch of stuff. One of the biggest products, you know, built as a part of a venture studio is uh, Light on Polygon, which is the biggest LSD on Polygon to this day. But kind of the most important part is, the latest part, when we started working with Stark like two and a half years ago, I still remember it was, I think, in Paris. Uh, Tom was doing some presentation. It was pre-mainnet on StarkNet. Yeah, we managed to build this. It's going to scale to 1,000 TPS. It's going to be best tech. Well, I was like, well, this makes sense, you know. And two and a half years ago, we are still building it, although it improved a lot. So obviously, one of the things we wanted to build back in the day was, you know, to build DeFi because DeFi was the main thing. But, you know, there was no tooling, so what we did, we started building tooling. So that's kind of when the space shards started, and out of those kind of all the explorations and stuff is what we are going to talk about is Nimbora, what it is, and why we think it's so revolutionary. So, how many of you here have used the internet? Oh, we have a couple of hands, so others didn't? Okay, nice, yeah. So, what happens when you go to a website? You just open the link and think works, doesn't it? You know, what happens when you go to Web3 kind of thing? You go there, maybe it works, you have to connect the wallet, maybe you have to input the password for the wallet, maybe that doesn't work because you forgot it, but if you forgot it, basically you usually lost the money or something. And then it's like, you know, how does it work so well in Web2? Why, why don't we build it in Web3? When you think about it, it's quite simple because in Web2, Stuff is still asynchronous, you know, like we go to a website, we get it lazy loaded, and then, you know, in the background, we have all these requests, but the user doesn't see that. So can we build similar experience in Web3? Well, maybe, something that Nibora does. When we go a bit more deep is we have these two theses or two schools of thought in Web3 in general, modular versus monolithic. Who thinks here Solana will be the best thing out, out there and will have win over everything? Okay, I like this, no hands here. So yeah, just wanted to say, if you, if you believe that, you can kind of leave the room, so, so yeah. But the modular thesis from Ethereum, it's kind of like, we have all these roll-ups, L2s, L3s, L93s, or whatever, that has going to be you know, built on top of it. But then you think about it, okay, I as a user, I'm on Ethereum, I have a wallet, and I want to use StarkNet, what I have to do? You go to the bridge, you click the button, deposit the bridge contract, wait for some time on the other side, usually forget that I bridged, then I figure out a week later, oh, I have some funds here, you know, miracle, like an airdrop. And then when I do that, it's, oh, what did, what did I want to use with that? Yeah, some protocol, but maybe it crashed, rug pulled, or, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't work the same. We all have all these things we need to do that are synchronous, but can we make them, you know, look synchronous for the user? Can we make these kind of zaps and you know, synchronous, so it feels like that. Well, that's you know, kind of what the magic means, and that's, I think, the moment where we'll have kind of, kind of the, the let me just think here. Uh, yeah, some messages. <laughs> anyway, so the idea basically is that we have synchronous user experience for the end user, but stuff is going still asynchronous in the background. 
Because if we think about it, all this synchronous universal composability means that we'll have one big chain with all the liquidity on it and so on, it doesn't scale. Web doesn't work like that, Web3 doesn't work like that, and you know, thing just doesn't work like that. So for this journey, we'll introduce the board of the penguin. This guy basically here with, you know, with the ears and stuff and so on. Why we are introducing Board of the Penguin is because we believe when we go to, to users that are using Nimbora, we don't have to explain to them what Ethereum is, why our wallet is the best, why our website is the best, and you need to use to this bridge and not that and so on. They just need to use it like they do in Web2. How many of you have used like a Neobank, some earn program in Neobank? Like you click a button and it works. Is anybody? So nobody saves here, everybody just tapes from what I see. But the whole idea is kind of quite simple. You are in the app, you have already money basically in the account, which in Web2, you know, it's kind of like custodial, banks has it for you and so on. In Web3, it can be account abstraction wallet on your phone. Why can we recreate that experience? Well, with Nibora, we, we can. So that's kind of the idea behind it. So what is Nibora actually? It's capital efficient L1, L2 cross protocol interactions. Imagine doing stuff on L1, paying a lot of gas for that, and now forget about that, get the experience of using it from L2, much cheaper, but the same self-custodial account abstraction experience, and you can get access to that yield. It's obviously good for ultra-efficient cross-chain yield strategies. It's powered by account abstraction on top of StarkNets via the Vaults engine, and we call it one-click DeFi. Swap, deposit, earn, all in one click. Because when you think about it, let's say you want to stake with Lido. What do you need to have? Which asset? Does anybody know what, what Lido accepts as an asset if you want to stake? Did anybody hear about ETH? Do you know what ETH is? <laughs> oh, good job. Yeah, you will get a hat later on. So, <laughs> so the idea basically there is you need to have some ETH that you want to stake and so on. But of, what if I only have stable coins? Well, you know, I have to go swap, find maybe use Avenue, go swap there, and then when I do that, I need to go back, deposit it, maybe I'll lose some fees. You know, it's complicated. Why don't we make it multiple so it's kind of, it feels like one, but it actually is a multiple step in the background. And that's the whole magic. You give this experience to the users while all these things are happening in the background. But for them, it's just one click. So, how does it actually work under the hood? You know, I, I explained everything is simple, you know, there is no lot of things and so on. And then we look at this graph, it's like you need a PhD to understand it. But it's actually quite simple when you think about it. You have users on L2 that use basically some of the, of the strategies. So we have a vault on L2 that receives deposit or redeems. So what we can do is, let's say I want to stake some ETH, let's say one ETH. You want to stake two ETH, Tony wants to stake three ETH. Well, that's six ETH altogether. Tony's a whale, so you know, I had to choose him. And then some other guy had enough because it is 3.5 thousand and he is enough, he's going to retire. He wants to unstake, just sell everything and go to, I don't know, to Bali or Bora Island and so on. Well, that's fine. What we then do is we aggregate these deposits, which is six ETH minus three ETH that this person wants to unstake, that he staked before, and just shuttle that, like bridge that three ETH to mainnet, deposit it with Lido, get the seed back, and give it to the users. So basically what we have is local matching of intents on L2, plus Delta basically bridging to mainnet and doing the interaction for you. All in one click, while not exposing you to any gas fees on mainnet. But if this is too complex, we have Bora here, so you don't have to worry. Bora solves everything for you, and you know it's quite simple if you don't want to know these things. How it actually works for you if you're a user, it's quite simple. You go to a website, you connect, unfortunately still with the wallet, that's hopefully something we'll go sort in the future so you can have in-app wallets and you don't need to use them like this. But yeah, let's say you have some Wi-Fi token because you're your maxi, you don't know what to use with it, but you want to stick with Lido because Lido basically is the thing you want to earn yield on top, you want to earn some income on top. And what we do in the background, you first zap, Yifi, basically, we swap Wi-Fi or whatever, the, how do you pronounce this, to eat and then deposit into all that eat. So who wants to repeat that so he can get a hat? Who understood that? Okay, this guy really wants a hat, so, so yeah. <laughs> and then after that, 
It's fine. When you want to deposit, you get some LP tokens. You start earning instantly, and that's kind of the magic moment. You click a button, you instantly get the response that you are starting to earn yield. While in the background, what's happening is this kind of ETH is, matching, is getting matched with other users, and every 24 hours, and even more frequently in the future, getting zapped and bridged to L1, deployed in a strategy, and, and bridged basically the assets back. And that's fine, because when we do that, you know, we have some like maybe downtime, you know, your ETH is not profitable for a couple of hours, but in the long like, run, and all the numbers, it's not really that important. The main difference is when you want to unstake. Well, normally, if you want to unstake, you know, it's, it's the same 24-hour kind of flow, but maybe you're in urgent, you know, you want to, I don't know, dump that ETH, swap it for something else, and so on, and then there is basically an option for, for basically, why this doesn't, yeah, it just gives me flow, yes, okay. Then basically, you don't need to wait for 24 hours, you want to do it faster because, you know, you want to swap it faster, well, there is an instant option. One option is to go like, di di like directly swap it on the Starknet. Maybe the price will be a bit worse or whatever. Another is bridging we have the fast withdrawals to mainnet and back. But again, for you, you just see the fee difference. So you don't care what is happening in the background. You don't have to take these assets, move it somewhere else, zap it. It's all one click. So that's the magic of anymore. One click for everything you need to do. So what's next for us? It's, it's actually quite, quite interesting roadmap. So what we want to do is ultimate interoperability. I know it's a buzzword. You know, everybody wants to do that. We want to scale blockchains, make them unisom, and so on. But our idea is that we can bridge any chain, any wallet, any asset in one click and do the routing for you. So you don't have to care about what's going on in the background. We can scale any L1 strategy and use to L2s and vice versa. And we can build our protocols that have partial logical execution on L1 and partial on L2s. Because if you think about it, you have only protocols that work on one domain, either on Starknet, either on mainnet, either on some other chain. But what if we could have partial logic on Starknet, partial logic on mainnet, depending where basically the thing needs to happen? It opens a lot of doors. And obviously, we are extremely proud of our SDK. That kind of works for developers. So you can be easily build any kind of execution from L1 to L2 in 60 lines of solidity. So you don't even have to learn Cairo. You know, how amazing is that? I mean, some people love Cairo, so no offender there, but you know, it's even better if you can do it just with Solid. So that's kind of short it. I just I hope I managed to introduce you in Bora. If you're interested, join us on Discord. We'll share some like early links for the for the alpha version of the yields. So you know, happy to get you get you on board. If there are any questions, let me know.